welcome to Jen Harrow's incredible garden. We're right near North Lake, also a really cute town. Uh, I want to thank you all for um, joining us this morning, and I want to thank Bluestone Landscaping for being um, Jen Harrow's garden sponsor. We're all with the Pewaukee Area Arts Council, and um, I want to thank Ellen Becker Investment Group as our overall sponsor of the event. And today is a real treat. We have Melinda Myers joining us. Melinda is a nationally known gardening in Wisconsin, a special expert, a TV, radio host, author, columnist, it goes on and on. <laughs> and a gardener, like and, everybody else. And here. a gardener. <laughs> so welcome, thank you so much for joining us and uh, take us on a tour of Jen's garden. Well, I want to thank Jen thank and for letting me come and I want to thank American Transmission Company for underwriting my visit here. Um, and I couldn't think of a better garden for them to have me visit than this wonderful pollinator habitat. Tell me a little bit about your inspiration for supporting the pollinators. Well, I know that our pollinators are on the decline these days and pollinators include the butterflies, moths, bees, and even some hummingbirds. So uh, my inspiration really is to create a little biodiversity on my property and enjoy the flowers along the way. So this garden feeds the pollinators and even actually the Asclepius over there, the pink Asclepius, you can see a little monarch is on there now. They also lay their eggs on that um, plant. So, um, so yeah, I guess that was my inspiration and... Um, and you've done a great job. I love all your zinnias. Um, one of the programs American Transmission Company does that I work with them is Grow Smart to bring pollinators in with pollinator friendly plants, natives and non-natives. And uh, you started these from seed? I did. I start all my um, annuals from seed and it, it's uh, really a fun thing to do. Like toward the end of March I start them because I have an unheated space, but um, we put all the seedlings on, on heat mats, so um, it's fun to see them come up. And I think it gets your green thumb warmed up for the season, being in Wisconsin, we can't yes. wait to get started. And it's a great way to extend your budget as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you can then spend more money on your perennials. And I noticed, you mentioned the swamp milkweed, and that monarch came in on cue. Isn't she beautiful? Yes, excellent. And I know this isn't just to keep me out of the garden. <laughs> no, um, I have a lot of garden pests, like a lot of people, I'm sure. But this little fishing line wire keeps the deer out of my garden. They can't see it. They touch it with their legs and they jump away. And I've watched it myself. So um, it really works. And it's not obtrusive, which I really like. Well, that's good. I mean, I, for me, it's kind of a nice order. Only you see it. And I'm glad you don't see it. <laughs> and um, you included some other elements, like water for the mm -hmm. pollinators. Mm -hmm. And um, I've seen birds on that little bird bath. Um, and I made that little pot. I mosaic the little nice. pot in the, in the uh, dish. And so they come in, and even the butterflies sit on there every once in a while. So, what's your favorite plant in this garden? Oh gosh, hard to, hard to I, choose. It's really hard to to say, but I think I like the Asclepius the best because it is a native, and it seems to be really doing its job over there. It's loaded with bees and butterflies and. And not as aggressive that. as the common milkweed, which I love, but yes. can take over. Well, my, my uh, area beyond the gardens definitely is full of common milkweed. So. Well, and your garden goes on. You've created this wonderful, wonderful area. How long have you been growing these gardens? Oh, gosh. These gardens are probably 10 years old or maybe a little more. And as you know, Melinda, they're constantly evolving. So every year I do something a little different and see what works the best and it's coming along. It's well, I think that's one of the fun things about gardening. You're never done. And I think that's good. Yes. And if you think you need to be done, well, nature will change your exactly. mind. Exactly. Now, you, like many people, suffer Dutch elm disease. And now we have emerald ash borer where we're losing trees. But you took advantage of this by creating a special area over here. Yeah, and, and we planted 45 native shrubs in a tree this spring so that we provide host plants for our pollinators. And so far, so good. 
It's great. It's wonderful. It's it feels good to do that. So you have, you have screening, you have supporting the pollinators, and a nice backdrop for your garden. Lots, lots of cages for the deer. <laughs> and that's that's very important. Well, I know your artwork doesn't stop in the garden, but continues on the canvas. So I'm going to turn you back over to Julia to talk a little bit more about the art end of this garden. <laughs> Hi, Jen. Why don't you tell us about your, your artwork that so, you have on display? Well, basically, it's focusing on things in the garden feathers that I find on the ground and some moths that I've trapped and photographed and then allowed to be set free. And so we have some a butterfly and this is just an, an example of my watercolor art. So, and then over here we have Carolyn Larkin's beautiful work and that too is garden related. So. And Carolyn's here so we're going to Pop over and see what she's painting. This is Carolyn Larkin. She's a member of the Pewaukee Area Arts Council as well. Tell us what you're painting this morning. Um, well, this is plein air painting, so I'm painting what I see. So I've set myself up um, and I've got it what's called sight size, so I'm kind of paint right in front of me. So I'm, this is the block in, this is a very early stage. Um, and I start with my darks to get this dark. If you look, if you squint your eyes, this is the biggest thing in painting is you squint your eyes and you see this lovely um, shapes of darks that run through this. So I want to get those darks in there that kind of support and connect everything. And then the part that I love is the flowers, which are the pops of colors. And that's the last thing. So you have to go through all this architecture and all this background and all this darks and all that stuff. And then you can put your pops of color and the colors will show up once they have a dark background beneath. And that's what makes them come out. If, they're, if everything's a bright color, it, it doesn't you know, show up. So that is my plan. Um, this is my easel, which is all comes down. This is an umbrella that I use to shade my um, palette because if you've got direct sunlight on here, when you bring it inside, it just is not the same color because it's never as bright inside as it is outside. Well, so. thank you very much yep. for sharing your painting with us, Carolyn Larkin. So, Carolyn isn't the only artist in the garden at Jen's house this morning. We also have Lindy. Linda Kowaleski, and she's playing guitar for us. Thank you, Linda. Thanks for joining us this morning for the second of the tours. We have one more to go. Um, and that's in Sussex and it's at my house. So I will see you all in an hour or so as we do our final uh, Facebook Live from the Art and Garden Tour virtual. Thank you.